So far, the video game module for Flipper Zero hasn't really been used for anything interesting other than the starter apps that allowed you to use the sensors and HDMI output to play a few very simple monochromatic games. But thanks to a collection of ported files and applications, it's now possible to run a bunch of cool classic full-color animations through the HDMI output and even some games controlled by the buttons on your flipper. This video is inspired by another video by Derek Jameson. Go check out his YouTube channel for a bunch of great flipper content. Now, before I tell you how to get all of this cool new stuff onto your flipper, let's first quickly go through why it works. The Flipper Zero video game module primarily consists of an RP2040, which is a programmable microcontroller designed by Raspberry Pi. And it's the same microcontroller that you find on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, this isn't a fully-fledged computer like regular Raspberry Pis. This is much, much simpler. But because this is a pre-existing chip, there are already other projects made for it that can be ported to the video game module. One of these projects is known as Pico DVI, and it's a collection of retro animations to be run on the RP2040 and output to a display. These files have been ported by Jay Blanked on GitHub to work with the Flipper Zero video game module, along with a new game engine. This has made it very simple to get working on the Flipper Zero. This is how you get these files onto your Flipper. We first need to install two applications to your Flipper. Plug your Flipper into your computer and go to lab.flipper.net and click connect. Make sure that QFlipper isn't open. Go to apps and search for video game module tool and install it. Then search for VGM game remote and install this. Now we need to transfer all the animation and game files to your flipper. Go to Jay Blank's GitHub page named VGM library. There's a link in the description down below. Click the green code button and then click download zip. Extract the files onto your computer. Open the folder named screensavers. Here you will find a bunch of UF2 files and these are the color animations. Now open QFlipper and connect to your flipper. Make sure that you've closed Flipper Lab before doing this or QFlipper won't be able to connect to your flipper. Click the file management tab and click your SD card. Right click and create a new folder and name it VGM. Now drag and drop the files from the screensaver folder into this new VGM folder in QFlipper. It might warn you that the file sizes are too large, but just click upload anyway. Now create a new folder named engine in the VGM folder on your flipper. Go back to the folder with the files you extracted and navigate to engine and Arduino. Here you will find a bunch of UF2 files and these are the games. Drag and drop these files into the engine folder on your flipper. Now you're ready to play around with these new files. Let's start with the screensaver animations. Plug the video game module into your flipper and plug in a monitor to the HDMI output. I'm using this cool retro CRT, but you can use any display with an HDMI connection. The RP2040 microcontroller chip on the video game module can be programmed with any firmware and the firmware stays saved on the chip even when it's disconnected. If you've installed the official Flipper video game module firmware, then it will simply mirror whatever is shown on your flipper onto the connected display. But we want to install these new ones. This is done by going into Apps, Tools, and then selecting the Video Game Module tool that we installed from Flipper Lab earlier. Here we can choose to install the official firmware, which you can do if you ever want to go back to that. But we will choose to install a firmware from File. Now navigate to the VGM folder and select DVI Logo Bounce. Depending on the complexity of the animation, it might take a while to install. When it's done, it will be activated as soon as you click the OK button. As you can see, this is the classic DVD logo animation with a twist. And you can stay here all day hoping for the logo to bounce into the corner. Since this firmware is now installed onto the video game module, at this point the Flipper Zero isn't doing anything other 
than providing power. So we can actually disconnect the video game module from the flipper and power it through its USB-C connector completely standalone. To try out the other animations, simply install them from the VGM folder as you did before. These are the animations available as of the making of this video. Aquarium, inspired by the classic screensaver. I really like this one. Boing Ball. This is the classic Amiga graphics demonstration. Bouncing Balls. A bunch of colorful balls. DVI Logo Bounce. Your whole classroom is waiting for it to hit that corner. Flying Toasters. Another classic screensaver. Trippy TV Host. This one is inspired by the old TV show Max Headroom, where the host was a fictitious AI personality, always glitching out in front of a colorful background. And it's also the TV show that inspired the well-known TV hack Signal Hijack in 1987 in Chicago, known as the Max Headroom Incident. Now let's jump into playing some games, where we need to do something slightly different. The games are installed in the same way as the color animations. By going into the Video Game Module tool, select Install Firmware from File and navigating to the VGM folder. But now you need to go into the Engine folder and pick a game. For instance, Flappy Bird. But to control the game, we need to use the other application we installed from Flipper Lab. And it's located in Apps, GPIO, and it's called VGM Game Remote. This application allows your flipper to send the button presses to the video game module through the GPIO connection. In the Flappy Bird game, pressing the middle button makes the bird flap. In this other first-person shooter game, inspired by a popular title, we can navigate using the arrow buttons and shoot using the middle button. To exit out of the VGM game remote, you have to hold down the back button. The game will continue to be running though, as long as the video game module is powered or until you flash a different firmware. I won't show you all of the games here, so you will have to go exploring by yourself. While I think some of the color animations are pretty cool, most of the games are at this point only basic tech demos of the development of the VGM game engine. But this also means that you can experiment with developing your own games for the video game module. It's fairly easy to install the VGM game engine library into the Arduino development suite and get started playing with the demo code. Go check out Derek Jameson's video for instructions on how to get started. Navigating between the VGM firmware installer application and then the game remote application is a bit cumbersome. I think it should be fairly easy to combine these two applications into a more user-friendly interface, where you could quickly select a game and jump straight into playing it. Maybe even having some games output data into the flipper and display status information like points or life left on the flipper display itself. None of these projects output audio, but other RP2040 projects do work with audio out through HDMI, so it should be possible in the future. Another possible future development could be a game controller adapter for the GPIO port on the video game module itself, so that you could use better controllers. There is already an NES emulator for RP2040, which uses a breakout board for HDMI and controller interfaces. Someone should definitely port this to the video game module as well. I'm very happy to finally see the somewhat overlooked video game module being used for something interesting. And now that the ball is finally rolling, the potential use cases for this weird thing are becoming much clearer. I hope I've given you a small insight into some of the new possibilities of the Flipper Zero video game module.